Hello and welcome to Guy Logic Gaming. My name is Temko and this is Gaming the System, the series where we take a bit of gaming tech and explain what it does and what you can do with it to get the best out of your games and get the most out of your games. This episode is all about anti-aliasing, what it does, how it works and most importantly what all of those damn acronyms mean for your gaming performance and visual experience. In the background I've compiled a few examples of various games that have their AA enabled and disabled to show you the effects of AA when all other settings are set to max or whatever the game's highest setting might be. Now visually on YouTube this might not come across as that big a difference as it appears locally here on my recording. This is because YouTube's algorithm and YouTube's rendering creates quite a bit of heavy compression that definitely messes with video fidelity. That said, what the hell is AA? Well, it stands for anti-aliasing, which will also tell you absolutely nothing. So to explain it in simple terms, it's a technique used to remove jagged edges from things on screen. When you render something on screen, only horizontal or vertical straight lines look clean. When you put something diagonally, all these pixels have to be stacked side by side and this results in jagged edges, which if you've ever seen a almost staircase like effect on an item or a character or an object in a game that should have a very clean and smooth edge, that is what a jagged edge is and that is when anti aliasing removes. Now every model that gets rendered on screen and as a result of this rendering they will have very rough edges. When you apply anti-aliasing this works to detect those various pixels and those edges and then on those models and objects or even the full screen works to smooth them out providing a much cleaner, smoother and more visually pleasing look at the game. Obviously you normally do this in combination various other effects and options and abilities in the game that you can improve the overall visual experience. But for the demonstrations of this video we are only looking at anti-aliasing and not all the other various things that can affect visual fidelity of a game. Now there are myriad of variants to implement AA in a game and depending on the game your PC specs in terms of hardware performance but also various technical implementations that are available on your GPU or CPU these can differ wildly. So I'll go into various different forms of anti-aliasing and explain the advantages, disadvantages and the possible impact of each of these variants. So first up is the most common variant of anti-aliasing known by the name of FXAA. This stands for Fast Approximate Anti-Aliasing and as the name says this is relative to other forms of AA a much less performance intensive variant. The main principle behind FXAA is that it takes every pixel on screen and instead of analyzing the various separate 3D models or interactions between these models, it just smooths all of them immediately. It doesn't really take effect over different layers or sample multiple times across multiple pixels to get the best possible visual experience. It tries to get the best approximation, hence the name, of what it can get around to. The side effect of this is that it also includes things that have already been affected by different other shaders, by different other effects in the game, and that may again result in the effect you get on screen. The base result here for FXAA is that it results in something can only be described as blurry textures. And though this is still many times better than not having any AA at all, this variant does keep with some trade-offs that depending on the game might not be something you desire. While light on the performance hit for your graphics card, this blurry effect can and does have major annoyances in games when developers don't properly time the drawing of things like on-screen text and UI elements which are also affected by this type of AA. Now FXAA is by far the most common form of AA available in games today. Mostly attributed to its ease of implementation and relative to other forms of AA is much less power intensive requirements making it much wider available to many more gamers around. And the inclusion in various toolkits such as Unity also help its case. But the AA magic does not end there. Next up comes MSAA. Now MSAA stands for multi-sample anti-aliasing and here the tin says it all as well. This variant of AA takes every pixel on screen and works to improve the visuals and smooth the edges of each one several times before combining all these different measurements and samples down to a new frame before sending it on to your screen to be rendered. Obviously this is a very computer power intensive way of removing jagged edges as not only does each frame need to be redrawn several times over for this form of AA which increases the effects and necessary need of memory and GPU bandwidth, it also draws many more frames on screen than you might visually require just to smooth out jagged edges. Because generally speaking, 
if you redraw the various pixels in the middle of a model, you're not going to get the best benefit as opposed to drawing edges, which this type of AA does definitely ignore in its vigor to make sure every pixel is sampled multiple times over and taken into account. Further compounding the need for high performance to achieve the best results, there are various methods of using MSAA, and while important from a technical perspective, these are not usually relevant to the end user with the options menu. This is more dependent on the developer and the choices they have made in the way they use sampling and distribution of sample sizes across pixels when trying to make these calculations for MSAA to do its magic. Generally speaking, as a user, you have the choice between choosing a MSAA option and depending on the game, you can choose two times sampling, four times the sampling, eight times the sampling, or 16 times the sampling. And as I said, this stands for the number of times a single pixel is taken for a sample before being redrawn to apply this AA effect. But again, it stands to reason, the more times you sample something, the higher the overhead requirements are for your graphics card in terms of performance and memory to perform this type of AA. Multi-sampling does have a few drawbacks outside of the overhead requirements, especially once you get to the point where you are already at times 8 or times 16 MSAA. When you're at this type of performance requirement and you have the computer power to deal with it, it might even be a better option to take a look at super sampling as opposed to multi-sampling because for the same level of performance requirement, that might provide a better visual experience. Now, if you take MSAA as a very intense form of AA, super sampling takes that up to the next level, where it performs the basic ideas much the same way as MSAA does by taking the same pixel and taking various measurements of its place and color and how it should appear altered to appear smoother to the player on screen, super sampling takes the pixel and renders it at a much higher resolution to make these calculations, resulting in obviously a super sampled pixel, a super sampling for AA. In much the same way the calculations are made, it takes this visual fidelity for these calculations and scales it back down again to create the effect that you get on screen. Now this overhead is very heavy for your graphics card. And the reason why many games don't implement SSAA is because it is so heavy uh, in terms of performance requirements. And obviously developers have limited time to develop their games. So if they have to pick and choose between various functions and options available to the player, SSAA generally isn't high on the list, especially if they're developing for console as well, that generally don't have the computing power required to do that on top of all the other magic they already have to perform at their performance level. Especially if you try to sample this at times eight or times 16, it becomes very inefficient in a very heavy handed way of trying to remove jagged edges. You might have to compromise on other options, which might not be the best solution. Obviously, if you have the technical monstrosity able to run and churn out frames at this requirement, you should definitely do so. Now, there are other forms of AA and other forms of adapting AA to existing formats, such as using a different form of SSAA called adaptive super sampling. And while I won't go into details for these various adaptions and options and different methods of implementing AA, because they're generally mostly important to the developer and not so much to the end player, it's good to know that there are variants. And even if one game doesn't run AA properly for MSAA, another game might run it for you quite a bit better due to the choice of implementation. Do keep that in mind. That said, if you have the capability of running a high SSAA resolution and sampling size, it might even be a better idea to just render a higher resolution. Running a game on a 1080 Ti at 4K will have much the same effect as super sampling due to the way that the pixel density appears on screen. The same goes if you're running a game on, a, on something like a smartphone. Due to the density of pixels on the display, it becomes much harder for the human eye to notice the fact that the edges are still jaggy and jagged because there are so many pixels on screen, it doesn't appear that way, even without any implementation of AA. Now, obviously, the vast majority of us don't have the technical performance on a computer or the gaming peripherals for 4K gaming to do so. And for us, for now and for the foreseeable future, implementing AA is going to be the way to go forward. But which method of AA should you use for your games? And this fully depends on two things. Obviously, the game's implementation as available in the game, it might just come down to whether or not you want to enable AA through a yes or no question. 
and that might be all the choice you have. It might not even explain the type of AA that is in the game, and you'll have to test and see whether or not the performance impact of their implementation is worth throwing it on. So generally speaking, if there is no explanation, 9 out of 10 times in my experience, it's FXAA. But other games allow you to choose from FXAA to SSAA times 16, in these scenarios, you should definitely try to find the good balance between AA and other various different options in the game, such as maybe higher texture quality or shadow effects. And if you found that sweet spot and balance, do remember it, because chances are you want to try that same one on the next game next time. So that is AA in a nutshell. Those are the various options and things available to you, and I hope you learned something today. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, do hit that like button. And if you found it useful and want to see more of gaming the system, be sure to press the subscribe button down below. And if you truly want to support Gaia Lodge Gaming as I continue to make ad-free content available to all of you, then do check out Patreon down in the description below. So I wish you a good day and until next time, right here on Guy Logic Gaming.